Armando Hasurangan, Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe. Join the four-man group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook, Armando Hasurangan. Please make sure to like, and here you can also ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, such as artworks. It would be greatly appreciated. And you can also change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. This is part two of the chemistry re revision video, and we're going to look at the periodic table. Now, a modern periodic table can appear very complicated because it has all these many chemical symbols with all these numbers, but it is designed in a way to help us learn about each element, and they are grouped and categorized into sections to help us better understand these elements. Mendeleev, the guy who created this modern periodic table, designed it and ordered it in such a way that the elements are organized in increasing atomic mass. So if we can learn to read the table, it's basically as same thing as a musician can read music notes. And so we begin by looking at this modern periodic table. Let's look firstly at a particular element and see what these numbers and symbols mean. So for example, let's select carbon over here. So carbon um, has a few numbers in it. We have the top number, which is the atomic number, what, what number element it is. And the atomic number also tells us how many protons this particular element has. In this case, carbon has six protons. And the C represents the chemical symbol, and below the chemical symbol is typically the atomic mass, also the atomic mass unit, or also referred to as the molar mass. But we won't get into molar mass just yet, that's for another video. But essentially, for every proton there is usually an electron. So if carbon usually has six protons, this would mean that carbon has also six electrons. Now, these electrons are very important because electrons determine the chemical behavior of a particular element. So note, please note this. And why does an electron determine the chemical behavior of an element? Well, electrons are what forms bonds. And electrons occupies um, certain areas um, of, the, of space of a particular atom known as orbitals. And we'll learn about orbitals in the next video. But for now, just know that electron determines the chemical behavior of an element. So electrons are very important. Now, to read a periodic table, two important things. A period is a horizontal row of a periodic table. So for example, this horizontal row is known as a period. And then we also have the vertical row. And this is known as a group or family. So for example, here, the second vertical row is, from, is of a particular group and family. And we can also name each vertical group from 1 to 18, because there are 18 vertical rows. But there's a better way to group um, these elements. We can further group them into columns by the number of electrons in the outer shell, and assign each column a Roman numeral. And from this, we get two groups, A and B. So for example, here is group A. Here is 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, and 8A. And the remainder, group B, starts from here, 1B, 2B, 3B, 4B, 5B, 6B, 7B, and these three um, vertical rows are 8B. Uh, these bottom elements here are known as a langothionide uh, langeth series and the actinide series, and they're, we don't really talk about them in this chemistry revision, but essentially they fit into this region here. And another important thing to note is that many elements are essential to health and life. And these elements are particularly carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen. That's very important. So now let's look at uh, this periodic table in a different way, in, into grouping them into these different types of elements. So in this periodic table, you can see that there are three different colors. And so we can classify all these elements in the periodic table into three different types. And these are the blue ones, the metals, the orange one, the metalloids, and this light brown one, the non-metals. And let's look at each of these separately and see what uh, chemical properties they have and what structure they exhibit quickly. So first, let's look at metals. Now, metals are solid at room temperature, so they're in solid matter, except for one particular metal known as mercury, a chemical, chemical symbol, Hg, and it's liquid state in a room temperature. Metals tend to be large atoms, and metals like to also lose electrons. They like to give away electrons, making them positive. For example, sodium, the chemical symbol Na, 
will typically want to give away electrons, one electron, to make it Na+. And because metals like to lose electrons, they like to give away electrons, they have metallic properties such as being orsital, malleable, and being good conductors. Next, let's look at nonmetals, these brown ones, part, this brown part of the periodic table. And nonmetals have no characteristics of metals, that is why they're called nonmetals. And usually they're gases or solids. And they have diverse appearance and chemical behavior. And also, el um, also they include elements necessary for life and for health. And as I mentioned, these were carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen. Finally, let's look at metalloids, these orange ones here. And metalloids are named metalloids because they share chemical properties of both metals and nonmetals. And they're also sometimes referred to as good semiconductors because they share partly the chemical property of metals. So they're called semiconductors. And finally, we can group the elements even further according to their physical and chemical properties um, in each group. So for example, group 1A, this first vertical row, um, they're, na they're known as alkaline metals. And then we have group 2A, which is known as the alkaline earth metals. And remember, all these groups, they share chemical uh, very similar chemical properties and behavior, particularly with electrons. And then these middle metals in this section are known uh, predominantly the group B, from 1 to 8, B. Uh, they're known as the transition metals. And these are down the bottom, the lanthionides and the actinides, are known as the inner transition metals. And these four vertical rows, uh, which is the 3A, 4A, 5A, and 6A, and all these four, they actually have no particular family name, but each vertical fam row, the family, they show similar characteristics. And then we have 7A, which are called halogens. And finally, we have 8A, which are known as noble gases or inert gases, and because they're all gases. And they're actually the most stable elements, the 8A. And why are they the most stable elements? Well, it all has to do with electrons. And we'll soon learn more about electrons in, uh, when we learn about valence electrons and electron configuration. But for now, we just stop there, and that's all we need to know about the periodic tables. It can be categorized into metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. And we can further categorize them into families, such as alkali metals, alkaline earth metals, transition metals, halogens, and noble gases, for example. And of course, there are many more trends in the periodic table that we can read, which we'll learn, which we'll learn about further as we learn more about chemistry. For example, the increasing ionization energy and electronegativity as we move to the right of the table and as well as the decreasing atomic radius as we move to the right and all these different sort of trends and why we have these trends but next we are, we'll learn about orbitals and it's a very confusing topic about orbitals elements within orbitals etc but I hope you can understand it because it's pretty important in chemistry thanks for watching please like comment and subscribe